Lord, please bless the words of my mouth to the ears of those who will hear them. Today, we're talking about prayer, which, oddly enough, has actually become a pretty popular topic of interest for me over the last few months. On a very basic level, we can look at prayer as our own personal communication with God. Yes, there are many different types of prayer, including corporate prayer, which we do every Sunday here together as a group. But even though we're all praying together the same prayer at the same time, we're still individually lifting our voices up to the Lord in prayer. And the act of prayer is important. Prayer is referenced over and over throughout the Bible. I actually did a quick little Google search just to kind of see how many times is prayer referenced in the Bible. And like over 600 times is what came up as the initial answer. We have several instances of prayer in our scripture readings today. And in fact, our gospel reading actually starts with Jesus praying. The one characteristic that all prayer has in common is that it's our communication with God. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, whether we say it out loud, whether we say it silently, no matter what the subject matter is, prayer is our communication with God. And it's a foundational element in our relationship with the Lord. Just as our human relationships are developed and nurtured and strengthened through good communication, right? All of married couples, couples, friendships, all of those things, we all know that without good communication, the relationship is not great, right? Our spiritual relationship is the same way. It's strengthened through prayer, through our communication, our open and honest communication with God. Our first reading today in Genesis 18 is actually a really good example of that. And I got tickled while I listened to Carol read it, and y'all will probably hear why in just a minute. It, this is a conversation between Abraham and God. And through one lens, we can see this exchange as Abraham testing the Lord's patience and his limits as he continues to like lower the number of righteous people, okay, that God is willing to spare Sodom for. He starts out with 50. And then it's, well, what about 45? Okay, well, God, don't be mad, but what about 40? Well, don't be mad, but what about 30? How about 20? Okay, what about 10? Like, how low can he go? I kind of hear like an auctioneer in my head, like, do I hear 50? Do I hear 40? You know, going the uh, opposite direction. And from a parental perspective, this encounter always reminds me of my children testing my limits and wanting to see where those boundaries are exactly, trying to figure out exactly what I'll let them get away with. But that's not actually the case here in this reading. Abraham trusts God enough to continue asking for the redemption of Sodom. If you can only just find five, if you can only find 10, will you do it? And God loves Abraham enough to patiently continue to answer him. We often read of Jesus praying in the gospels. Again, our gospel reading today started with Jesus in prayer. He was praying in a certain place, and then after he was finished, one of his disciples asked, teach us to pray. The way that John taught his disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. The prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples is a condensed version of what we're familiar with as the Lord's Prayer. It's part of our service every Sunday. It's one of those corporate prayer things where we all pray it together. But I think it's important for us to pay attention to how Jesus starts this prayer. Father, not Almighty God, not Creator, not Maker, but, Father, this speaks to the intimacy involved in prayer, to the closeness of the relationship between father and child that God, our Father, desires to have with us, his children. And I mentioned earlier that prayer has become a topic of interest for me lately. And you all may or may not know this, but I grew up in the church, and so prayer has been I've been around prayer my whole life, and I have prayed for the majority of my life. I mean, I'll be honest. It's been the majority of my life. But a few months ago,
ago, I started really, really thinking about prayer. And I wanted to kind of deconstruct it. I wanted to kind of pick it apart and see, you know, what is it made of so that I could better understand it. And I started asking questions like, why do we pray? How should we pray? What should we pray for? What should we not pray for? How many times a day? Like, how long should we spend in prayer? Are there guidelines? Are there rules? And then it really started to spiral quickly, and, and I started to think, well, maybe God's not answering my prayer because I'm not doing it right. You know, maybe I've been doing it wrong this whole time. I'm 40 years old, and I can remember praying as long as I'm alive, so maybe I was doing it wrong the whole time. And again, kind of spiraled quickly, um, but thankfully, God was pretty swift to come in and give me some reassurance through the scriptures and showing me that prayer is about more than just the structured words that we repeat regularly. It's indeed about that communication, that conversation, that relationship that we're building with our Heavenly Father. So there were several verses of scripture that came to mind as I was preparing for today and as I've been thinking about prayer and really rolling this over. Ephesians 3, 12. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. So we don't have to be afraid to come before God. Ephesians 6, 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, which means we're not limited by what we bring before God. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Again, we don't, we don't have to be afraid to come and sit in the presence of the Lord and ask our questions. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Okay. So, like, I'm starting to feel a whole lot better about how I've been doing prayer all my life. And James 4, 2, you do not have because you do not ask God. And as that one came up, I thought about a dearly departed friend, Dr. T, who was just a sim simply a beautiful soul and who was part of our Karate Dojo family. I have two other members of my Karate Dojo family here, well, three, if you count Mitchell. Um, here with me, but I, we always close our classes in prayer. And when he was with us, he would always say, Father, you say we have not because we ask not. Well, I'm here asking. <laughs> and sometimes it was for restoration of health. And many times it was for um, guidance for our leaders, helping our leaders to make wise choices. And sometimes, and this is one that always tickled me, Sometimes it was to win the lottery so that he could bless others financially. I do miss him. <laughs> we do not have to be afraid to come before God in prayer. No matter what happens to be on our hearts, no matter what we may be going through, no matter what emotions we may be feeling, whether we're angry, whether we're in grief, whether we are happy and elated, it doesn't matter what our cares or concerns are, or any of our requests, we, we have the freedom and the confidence to take all of that before God in prayer. There isn't anything that's too big or too small for God's attention. We aren't bothering him with our questions. That was one of the things that really kind of bothered me for a while. I always thought I was bothering God, like, God, you don't want to hear about this. This is just, you know, this is just a boring little part of my day. But he wants to be involved in all of that. And I especially had a problem taking things to him that I felt like I could handle on my own, right? Like, I got this. I, this, I don't need to bother you. I got this. But the truth is we actually shouldn't try to handle anything on our own. In John 15, verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So we, we shouldn't try to do, go out and do on our own. We should be taking God with us. In verses 9 and 10 of our gospel reading, Jesus says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. He does not say, God is a genie who grants wishes. We pray and we expect a response. 
but it doesn't always look the way that we think it should. And we have to reconcile that within ourselves. God always responds to our prayers. And just because we don't like the response, sometimes it's not. Or we don't understand the response. Or we can't see it yet because it's coming in God's timing, not ours. That doesn't mean that God doesn't hear us and respond to our prayers. We have to trust and believe that he knows what's best for us and he only wants to give us good gifts, just as we only want to give our children good gifts. That doesn't mean that we won't face challenges and hardships. We continue to live in a fallen world and things don't always work out the way that we think they should. But we can rest assured that God is a good, good father. And he is never more than a prayer away. We worship him. We praise him. We magnify him. We glorify him because he is God. He's the creator of heaven and earth. The maker of all that is seen and unseen. The author and the finisher. The beginning and the end. And we love him because he is our heavenly father. And we are his beloved sons and daughters. What joy there is in knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of our Father in heaven. And what a comfort that we can take everything to him in prayer and know that he will hear us. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the peace.